lot of. It would help if we knew what he looks like. At least we know he exists, sir. Ivan Marloff, Clark, second class in their embassy. Clark, second class. Attached to their special services. He would have had access to their coding system, distribution. And he says he's in possession of at least two top secret files. He says you didn't try to check him out? To uh, verify anything he says? Marloff spoke to me for no more than a minute. He was on the run then and frightened. He told me he wanted an effect, that he had important papers. But well, of course you checked on him, Parker. The General knows that you did. And you passed up the chance of getting your hands on something that might have proved very special? We all know what these defections are, the sudden holding corner things. You don't get the chance of getting everything in triplicate. He's frightened. Huh? Scared silly. He wants our protection. And he shall have it. But it would help to know what he looks like. He's late. Very late. He isn't coming. Oh, he's been intercepted. Hello? Parker? Marov here. Listen carefully. Said Parker. Tomorrow morning, I'll make myself known to him and only to him. Goodbye, Parker. Marlow. Well, what's he say? Instructions for another meeting. It'll be. That's all. He won't do it any other way. Adamant. I told you, he's a very frightened man. Well, we shall just have to go along with him, shan't we? Unless you have a better suggestion, General.
They made up both berths. I distinctly told them you'd be traveling alone. You need privacy. I told them that. Father, does it matter? Does anything matter? I'll have them fix it later. I reserved a table for the first sitting for dinner. First sitting, so you can get to bed early. Excuse me, please. That's my compartment. <laughs> Here we are. God, in his infinite wisdom, made us a certain agreeable size, but uh, the architect of this train was clearly an atheist. After dinner, take a sleeping pill. Then tomorrow morning when you wake up, you'll be in the country. Country air will do you good. <laughs> Tell him. Oh. Helen, there'll be somebody else for you. Other chances? Excuse me, miss. Half any minute, sir. Oh, thank you. Look, I'll be down at the weekend. Perhaps we could go riding. You used to like to ride. The most important thing is that you should relax. Now, don't think about... Don't think about anything. Bye-bye. My daughter's in V6. Oh, and Marlow, I'd like you to look after her for me. We look after all the passengers, sir. No, no, special service. My daughter's just out of hospital. A nervous breakdown. So if she needs anything. Don't you worry, sir. Thanks. I'll look after her, sir. Well, hold it. Just made it, sir. Yes. Um... D-13. This way, sir. First or second city for dinner, sir? Oh, uh, neither. I'm slimming. Don't want to be disturbed. Right. Dinner will be ready in about half an hour, sir. First or second city. We'll think about it. Right. Won't see them again. I, uh, I guess the bar is open. Yes, sir, but it's that way, sir. We're going away, Crawford. Well, homing instincts must be slipping. <laughs> Thanks. Second sitting for dinner. Second, please.
Yeah? First or second sitting, sir? Sitting? Sitting sounds like some ghastly student demonstration. No, sir. Dinner, sir. Oh, no doubt that'll be a ghastly event, too. Hmm? The potatoes pulverized by the perambulations of the train, the melon mangled, and the wine shaken to its very sediment. Oh, second sitting. Hillary! Hillary Vance! Madam. I think it was most uncanny. There is the George Sack, my Pomeranian Edith. Of course, my dear Edith, how are you? Edith was the Pomeranian. You have forgotten. No, 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 no. I've been accused of many things in my time, but never of ungallantry. Penelope? Kempston Smythe. Oh. There, you see? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. How extraordinary to find you here. And how pleasant, too. No need to ask you how you are. You're looking très uh, elegant. <laughs> and how is poor little Maud? Edith. Edith. Uh, I had her stuffed. And now she's sitting on the mantelshelf. It was a very long time ago. Oh, longer than I care to remember. You haven't changed at all. Well, <laughs> a little older. Considerably older. The manner, the voice, impervious to time. I, um, I would invite you in, but uh, two in this place would render it more horrendous than the Black Hole of Calcutta. <laughs> Perhaps later, at dinner. Perhaps. Mm. I still think you've forgotten it. No, 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 no. I remembered your name. My name, perhaps. But, but do you remember how I actually met you? Vividly. And what you said to me in the point of your own? I shall never forget it. Well, then tell me. Yes, uh, you have forgotten. I shall give you time to think about it. And ask you again. Wait. It really is the most ghastly way to travel from A to B. I should probably write some very rude letters about it. D13. D13? Across or down? You sound like the crossword puzzle. Oh, no, sir. Uh, D13, compartment D13. That's where I am if I'm needed. That, I suppose, is for starting a sprint event. Oh, no, sir. It's just in case. In case of what? Trouble, sir. Trouble. You may not have noticed. D13, or whatever your name is, but you already have very big trouble. Oh, in what way, sir? In my way. And that can be trouble on a grand and ghastly scale. You may have gathered I am unhappy. I am uncomfortable, and I am acutely aware of feeling more than slightly ridiculous. This whole affair is tinged with ridicule. It has an air of imminent disaster. I just popped in to see if everything was all right, sir. You clearly only understand the lesser Cantonese dialects of China. Sir? Well, clearly and manifestly, you do not understand the English language. You popped in to see if everything were all right, and I have told you, no, it is not all right. It is far from right. It is very wrong, not slightly or in several ways, but totally wrong. This place is cramped to the point of claustrophobia. I'm not used to being cramped. 
I am a man with a love of open space, inordinately fond of it to the point of fetishism. Open space and deep luxury and warmth and haute cuisine and scintillating company. Are you witty? Well, sir, I... Uh... Certainly, if you are scintillating, then your scintillator is badly in need of repair. You popped in to see if everything were all right. I have told you, no, it is not all right, so you can pop out again. Go on, then, off you pop. Won't be for long, sir. Time is relative, and I've already spent several decades in this alien environment. Just a few hours. You won't have to write any more rude letters. D13. Letters? You don't even know how to be. Darling. Barlow, dinner's now being served. Miss Marlow. Dinner's being served, miss. The dining car's that way. Help you, miss. No, I'll be along directly. Yes, miss. Good evening, Miss... Marlon. Helen Marlon. Uh, number four, Miss. Number four? Looks as though I'm the lucky one. Mallory. Bob Mallory. usually judge when a person needs to be left alone, but do you think a drink might help? Not a, not a drown your sorrow, wake up tomorrow feeling like hell sort of drink, just a socially warming glass of wine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's no need to be.
saying that tears are supposed to be good for the eyes. It cleans and refreshes them. Makes them more sparkling and beautiful than ever before. You must cry a lot. You're strange. I knew I shouldn't have packed that kangaroo. What about some wine? I think you'll find that this is a, a patient little wine. It's been uh, sitting around quietly here in its bottle since 1968. Just waiting for the right girl to come along. Speaking only for the wine, you'll understand. I'd say that patience is a virtue. Is it? It's me, Barkley, Mr. Vance. What do you want? I'm just checking you're all right. I've told you before I am not all right. I have berry, berry, jungle fever and the creeping black death. What was that? I am very contagious and I wish to be left alone. I see. Right. We were going to be married that week. He died instantly. How long ago was that? A year ago. Since then, I've been in and out of hospital. In a breakdown. I keep seeing his face. Dead. I'll always see it. No psychiatrist, but I would have thought a year. No matter how much you loved him, it should be healing by now. You, you don't understand. I was driving the car. I killed him. I, I don't know why I told you all this, Mr. Mallory. Bob, you uh, needed to talk. Yes, and... He'll be needing this table. The people have to eat. It was very nice meeting you. Good night. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, perhaps. I wasn't making polite noises. It was really nice talking to you. Good night. Good night. sitting for dinner. All right, thank you. Why I should thank anyone for what promises to be an indigestible event, I really don't know. What could one say in the world of Lloyd? The sun shining through the trees? Or was it the moon? 
Was it day or night? a deputation. Mr. Vance. Yes, I know who I am, and you too, but who are these other people? I'm sorry, sir, but we knocked, sir. Well, I was dozing. I was, I mean, I'm entitled to doze, I would think. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I had to make sure. Make sure of what? That, that, that you were alive. This lady, she said that you were dead. Indeed. Well, madam. Some of my jealous and inferior colleagues may well wish it, but I can assure you I am very far from Moribund. But he was dead. I was blind. I, I didn't imagine it. He was dead. Oh. Best that you just lie down, try and get some sleep. I, I saw him. I saw him. Come on. Sorry to disturb you, sir. Very sorry. Nothing surprises me. Nothing. Well, what's going on? Nothing you to concern yourself about, Barclay. Just some nonsense. I'm going in for dinner. She reported him dead. Her. Said she saw Mr. Vance dead. What? Murdered. I shouldn't get into a sweat about it, though. Her father told me she hasn't been quite herself. You know what I mean? Is that right? Yeah. Go for it, sir.
I shall follow the potage du jour with the most digestible fillet of meat you can find in your kitchen. I shall require it to be lightly dusted with black pepper and a soup salt of salt, and then grilled. Grilled, not fried, mind you, for 45 seconds on each of its flatter surfaces. Not 44, not 46, but 45, precisely. Hmm? You may bring with it such vegetables you may have stewing. I doubt if I shall eat them, but the mere sight of them, sad and soggy in their respective dishes, may make the meat taste by comparison uh, not better, because the word better implies an optimism I do not truly feel, but it may make it taste edible. Yes, sir. And a bottle of the Macon. Yes, sir. Try not to handle it excessively before you bring it to the table. I like my wine at room temperature, not body heat. Yes, sir. Oh, can I help you? Are you done, yes, sir? Uh, no, I've eaten, thank you. Ah, oh, my bloodhound, Barclay. Oh, may I call you D13? <laughs> you may join me for a glass of sherry if you wish, but not for dinner. I prefer to dine alone, particularly as you have the expression on your face of a man who has just had a wall fall on him. I was wondering, sir. Encouraging. To wonder is to question, and to question is the first sign of a developing intellect. That kerfuffle with the American girl. Kerfuffle. Kerfuffle is a word I do not recognize. It sounds like a dance for two persons, probably at its most popular at the end of the late 20s. But if you were to substitute melee, contretemps, or even misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, sir? Well, of course that's what it was. That poor, deluded girl imagined me dead. And even you can see, Barclay, that I am not dead. <laughs> Mind you, I have not yet eaten the dinner. It's funny, though. If you find it funny, Barclay, then your particular sense of humor eludes me completely. Yes, sir. Have you remembered it yet? Uh, uh, remembered. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, madam, but oh, I do have This madam again, is it? Oh, you have changed. You're not the same man at all. Not anymore. I should like to carry you out to the Baluchistan. That's what you said to me in the Bois de Boulogne. <laughs> Stan used to be the place. Talk to you, Madam Miss. My name's Barclay, Peter Barclay. It's about what you saw or thought you saw. Perhaps you're right, Miss, about plants. Perhaps you did see it there. I'd like to talk to you about it. I know you're upset. That's understandable. But I would like to talk it over. Look, if you change your mind, I'm in D13. Barclay, D13. Oh, beg your pardon, I thought this was D13. Please come in, Mr. Barclay, and close the door. Perhaps you did see him dead. Like to talk it over. Barclay, D13.
Mr. Barclay. Mr. Barclay? just this side of mediocre. You may quote me. Yes, sir. Surprise me. Sir? That it happens at all. Something wrong with the meal, sir? If you asked me if there was something right with the meal, then my reply would be shorter. That I could summarize. The plates upon which it was served were, to the casual scrutiny, clean and of reasonably robust porcelain, and the knife was sharp, but quite unfairly matched against the steak. You may unwittingly have stumbled upon the greatest discovery since penicillin, a substitute for plastic. I don't suppose you have a cigar? It couldn't be classified as disgusting than nasty. It's all part of your delusion, your breakdown. No. If you no. tell yourself, you keep seeing his face. Now, your mind can't bear the guilt anymore, so you've substituted another face. No. No, his... His body was there. No. It was there. The man who's sitting eating dinner right now. I'll show you. Then maybe you'll realize I'm right. Come on. See for yourself. There. 
See? Ah, that's better. The poets may wax idyllic about the balmy night air, but as far as I'm concerned, it's good for one thing only. Pneumonia. My morbid friend, you are not, I trust, representing a company of undertakers. You will drum up no business here. Longevity is on my side. My father lived until he was 110, and even then we had to finally shoot him. <laughs> uh, a joke. Note it, I seldom make jokes. Got some sleeping girls. Safe one, forget all about it. <laughs> Helen, I'm an engineer and I build bridges, so I understand stresses and strains. Too many. And the bridge falls down. Miss Marlowe, you all right, Miss? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. I, I just wondered if I could uh, borrow a paper or a magazine. <laughs> yes, of course, you can have this one. Oh, well, I'd, I'd rather have a magazine if you don't mind. I've got a few over here. This one do, Miss? Oh, yes, that's fine, thank you. You should have rung, Miss. That's what I'm here for. You're okay now, are you? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Shepard, do. Oh, thank you. That'll be fine. 
We just didn't feel like a property. I understand this. It's nice to know some courtesies to exist. My brief and incredibly unhappy years as cultural attaché were full of non-incidents, of anticlimaxes and ennui. That's right, sir, she did. And then? I don't remember. I keep having these... these terrible dreams. <laughs> oh, I'm I am now. Okay. I'll take care of her. That is what you want, isn't it? For me to stay with you for a while. Women. Particularly disturbed and denuded women who imagine things. Fred, you're right, sir. My father did warn me. Very sad. Good night. Good night. Dance is dead. I'm not mad, Mom. Hell, you can't do this. They're on honeymoon. How would you like it? Oh. Men have been killed for that. Helen, you can't do this. It's like lastly on the high railroad or something. Yes, Caviar and vodka may all be very well, but after a little while, one pines for the simple things in life. The caille earth on aspic, the pâté en trouve en gelée, the occasional Chateau Rothschild. 1926, of course. All right. That is that. I told you. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Maybe they know him or something. They behaved as though they know him. Oh, Helen. Oh, someone hit me. You say? Yes. And everything I say is suspect, isn't it? So, even if they do know him, why keep it tight like that? There I am ahead of you. Now look, if Vance is dead, and if Vance is alive, then there has to be two of them. The real one, I think, is dead. 
and the other one is an imposter. Now, if you were going to impersonate someone as acid and erudite as Vance, where would you begin? With that voice. And to do that, you'd need to study recordings, wouldn't you? If there was a body, then it was a toss up in the train. No. Part of that. No, there is a body, and it's still on this train. Look, throw a body from a train, and what happens? Somebody finds the body. The train stopped, and there's an investigation. Now, that's something they can't afford. Always presuming Helen knows a they. Bob, someone hit me. Where would you hide a body on this train? One of the other compartments. No, it would have to be somewhere... somewhere quiet and empty. Somewhere nobody goes. The luggage van. had me believing we would find something. It's crazy, Helen. Yes. Or I am. Come on. Arriving in 20 minutes, miss. Oh, thank you. Mr. Barclay. Heavy sleeper. Oh, no, he was up and about early, I think. He'd probably wait to fry some coffee out of the shed. Oh, thanks, miss. <laughs> Arriving in 20 minutes. Miss Marlowe, we'll be pulling in soon. Thank you. The bank's pulling in soon. Right. Pulling in soon, twenty minutes. Okay. Which one of them is Meldoff? Your guess is as good as mine, General. Hmm. I gave him my word, General. 
my word. The train should be coming in any minute now. If you trust that, then you must have implicit faith in miracles. Because I gave him my word. And because one false move, you'll scare him off. Malaf will run. He made it perfectly clear, Jen. He saw Hilary Vance lecture in his own country. Vance is unmistakable. And he is the only man Malaf will hand himself over to. Anyway, Barclay will be tailing them. It's in the guards van, right? Yeah. Well, it's been nagging away at me all night because I came aboard this train right behind Vance and I'll swear he didn't have any trunk then. Then someone else must have brought it on. Exactly, because they knew they had a purpose for it. Come on. <gasps> Mr. Vance, I'm sorry to put you to this inconvenience, but I attended one of your lectures once, and you are a very unusual man. I stand out like a sore thumb, or the last arbiter of good taste in an age of mediocrity. Hmm? You have the papers with you? They promised me asylum, protection. Yes, yes, and you shall have it, but first I must know if you have the papers. They are here. You will understand my anxiety, I'm sure. You understand. I'm a target for them. It was necessary that I... No. Please.
<laughs> I'd let her go if I were you. You know what they'll say if you strangle. Yes. But I'm mad. <laughs> 